everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Judith, but you can call me Judy. And today I want to share with you some tips and some things that you really, really, really need to know before you go to Japan. So please stay tuned and go through all the tips that I have for you today. This is based on my own experience when I traveled to Japan and I did something that I shouldn't have done. <laughs> now I know and I want to share that with you so you don't go through the same. I hope you enjoy these travel tips and you find them useful. Uh, if you are new to my channel and you like this video, please make sure to subscribe down below and give it a thumbs up. you check um, their requirements before you travel to Japan actually this will apply to like any travel experience like before you go to any country just check the visa requirements if you need one as a tourist or if you're going for work just make sure you have everything correct uh, you don't want to have any issues and get to that country and then you get rejected and sent back that will be awful so that will be awful i don't want that to happen to anyone and i know this is how oh, yeah of course i'm gonna check if i need a visa or not but in reality is that not many people do that because not many people need visas to go to every country around the world for example myself and um, my passport is from venezuela the so i actually need visa so i have to make sure i have everything to get into that country that I'm going. I know for Canadian people they may not need that. Like um, right now I live in Canada so if you have a Canadian passport you may have no issues going to Japan. Uh, make sure if you need one to get it um, before your trip so you are not like waiting for it and your trip is almost like in two days. Like don't find out in two days in advance because that's not gonna be enough time for you to get it. I they actually require a lot of information from you, so don't leave it for the last minute. So tip number two is make sure um, you book in advance. I do that all the time, like even months before uh, a, my trip, just to make sure I get a good rate. Like I love to travel, like I'm, pre I'm pretty sure if you're looking at this video, you love to travel as well and we always want to try to find ways to save money so this is one of it if you're gonna travel to japan make sure to book in advance i actually found my ticket at like 700 uh canadian dollars so that's actually pretty cheap because usually they are like a thousand or thousand two hundred dollars so actually it's super cheap and also uh, just check in which season do you want to go to japan um, there is a rainy season between like mid June to July, so it doesn't rain every day, but it may just ruin your trip. I actually went in that season, uh, just the start of the rainy season, and it only rained like one or twice, so it was fine. The weather was fine for me, but just make sure you check on those little things before you travel, because if you don't like the rain and then you know it's gonna bother you and you're not gonna go out and explore while, while you are in Japan it just make um, not be the right season for you to travel and you can go just instead you can go like in the springtime and see the cherry blossom if that's what you like actually it was a really busy season in for Japan because everyone wants to see it uh, but it depends on your liking for tip number three um, I will recommend, like highly recommend, to get a JR pass. I bought it in Canada before going to Japan. So they basically just gave you this little paper. Uh, it says that you got a Japan real pass. Mine was for seven days. And this one cost 354 Canadian dollars. With this pass, you can travel in the bullet train or Shinkansen to Osaka, Kyoto, or any other part in Japan that you may want to visit, Nagoya, it doesn't matter, you can travel with this pass. 
Um, there is a seven day pass that is the one that I got and there is a 14 day pass as well that may be like double the amount of my fees. We actually travel from Tokyo to Kyoto, from Kyoto to Osaka and from Osaka to Fukuoka with the same pass for the seven days. Um, and we travel inside Tokyo through the JR line, like if we wanted to visit like any place, we will check and see, okay, if we can take the JR line, let's take that one. So we don't have to pay extra in transportation. So that's basically what we did. So they give you this and once you get to Japan, you need to exchange it and they'll give you like a little car. It's, it's different than this. They also uh, gave me um, this little paper where it says like, where I can exchange my pass and I actually did it in the Narita airport once I got there and it's only available for um, for tourists, for foreign people you actually need to show your passport once you get to Japan so that's tip number three so okay, a JR pass if you're gonna be traveling uh, through Japan and you can also use this pass through the JR lines in to move around Tokyo then uh, tip number four Japan is a cash society so make sure you bring some cash with you you're not gonna be able to pay with credit card or debit card um, in Japan even in some like big stores that you may think that they are gonna accept it they don't exchange some money before you're uh, going to Japan you're gonna need it uh, you need cash pretty much for everything if you need to um, get some money, you can get to a you can go to an ATM in any of the convenience store like 7-Eleven or um, I don't remember the other one. But if you go prepare and if you um, exchange the money before you go, it's gonna be so much better. Uh, just because I know credit cards may charge a different exchange rate, then you're gonna get the ATM fee and. Of on top of that, the banks always charge like an international withdrawal fee or something, like if you use your car outside your country. So actually this is gonna help you to save money because you are not gonna be um, like paying that fee every time. Oh, my tip number five will be um, when you're booking the place where you're gonna stay, make sure this is close to um, any train line. Just because it will be so much easier for you just to move around so you don't have to walk miles and miles to get a train station and take a bus and then a train is gonna be worse so you can get easily everywhere through train with the train it's gonna be a little bit difficult to move at first because they have so many different lines like they have the JR line they have the Chuo line but actually you get used to it like really fast you need google maps of course like you get to the place and you don't know which line you're gonna take but if you go you use google maps it tells you you're gonna take the true line to whatever or you're gonna take the jr line to any other place so it's super easy to move around in train it might be a bit overwhelming at first at time but you will get used to it and so that was tip number five make sure you book a hotel that is fairly close to a to a train line so you don't so have one thing that you really need to keep in mind with transportation in japan they are super organized so even though it is super busy like if you have if you have seen this video when people get pushed into the train like that's true it happens my trains were pretty 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 full uh, mostly like uh, it happened mostly like um, rush time hours like when people is going to work or coming back from work that's gonna happen uh, it's true like I was in the trains and it was super busy to get in to get out but still they're super organized so what you need to do just to get into the train just and um, they will step on either side of the doors they will step there and open up like you will see and people is gonna get out and then after is when you go in so they're super organized so make sure you follow the rules just don't try to get into the train when people is getting out don't do that that's tip number six five six no, 
process, I believe that's number six. When you're gonna get into the train, make sure you stand up either side of the doors before you get in. Don't get in when people is getting out of the train. Don't do it. And also, don't talk very loud because it's super annoying, super disrespectful. And don't answer your phone. Just wait until you get off on the next stop and then you can call them back. You're not gonna see anyone like doing that in Japan. And I think I only saw like one person doing it. But it's not right. So please don't do it. Don't eat in the train. Don't talk. Um, don't use your phone. Like don't talk over the phone. And don't talk like super loud with the people you're with. Tip number six, make sure to uh, get your schedule. Like make sure um, to know which places you want to visit and organize them. Like for me, I, I always organize the places that I go. Like for example, if I want to go to, uh, I want to go to this temple. I'm going to check what's around the area and I'll try to go to like to the same place one time right because the distance sometimes can be long so i'll try to do everything around the same area one day and then the next area the other day and for me i found it that it works it may not work for you uh but always having a schedule and the things that you want to do and the things that you want to and the places that you want to visit it's really helpful so make sure to get your schedule with all the places that you want to see so you don't miss any or you try to do as much as you can and explore as much as possible when you're in Japan. Tip number seven, even though you actually don't need to learn Japanese when you go to Japan, it is actually really nice if you learn some words. Like for example, you can just learn to say hello or thank you, bye. So just like konnichiwa to say hello, um, arigato gozaimasu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but that's how I say it. And, and they will understand you. You don't need to like speak perfect Japanese. It's their culture and it's nice to show a bit of a respect. Like you are there visiting and that's what you want to do. You want to learn and get immersed in the culture. So it's konnichiwa to say hello, arigato gozaimasu. Um, to say thank you, oishi, that's delicious. Another word that I use uh, was... Um, Matane to say see you later um, because I was I actually when I was in Fukuoka I stayed with a friend and her mom used to cook that delicious meal for us in the morning and we of course we used to say like thank you it was delicious like thank you very much so much uh, so we will say oishi and arigato gozaimasu and when we are gonna go out we will say matane See you later because she didn't speak any English either uh, it was nice and we try at least to say something to her so they will actually appreciate it if you say something in Japanese if you want to learn more it will be awesome it's up to you uh, but just some some basic words that you uh, it will come handy just to know when to say another thing that I wanted to let you know is uh, uh, in some of the smallest restaurants they actually have a machine kind of like an atm machine but it's for you to order so um, you need cash to pay in like the ordering machine let's call it like that so you choose whatever you want you pay and they will give you some little tickets and you will hand out those to the people that is there like the server and that's how you order your meal some another thing that you really need to know and it's very important even if you're used to it do not tip do not give any tip to anyone anywhere nothing not to the taxi driver not to the servers like don't do it it's actually super rude and they will feel like you actually like left some money and they will run after you to give it to you like they will feel super awkward if you leave money behind like they are not used to it so that was my last tip for today i hope you really enjoy uh, these tips and please if you like this video subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up it will help me tons if you do that and i have some videos from tokyo osaka uh, kyoto and fukuoka if you want to check them out i'm gonna leave them right here and here and here
there for you to watch. So please make sure to check them out. See you next time and thank you for watching.